Hey there, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to add the main player to our game, which is this penguin guy here. I'm going to add very simple support for user input. I'm going to add a flapping animation, and then I'll add some collisions. So at the end of things, our game should look like this, where you can press space to have the penguin go up. There's a flapping animation that accompanies that, and then there are collisions at the top and bottom of the screen. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is drag in the assets we need for the penguin. So we'll go ahead and drag this folder into Godot. Looks like it went to the wrong place, so let me just move it into the sprites folder. And now we have penguin.png. Um, so now we just need to go ahead and create a scene for our penguin. The root node is going to be a rigid body 2D because we want the penguin to be controlled by the 2D physics engine. Uh, we don't want, for example, a static body 2D because then it just wouldn't move. And we don't want a kinematic body 2D because that would be controlled via code. We want our penguin's movement to be controlled by gravity. So I'll rename the root node and then I'll add a child node, which is a sprite. And I'll add another child node, an animation player. And I'll use the sprite node to display the penguin PNG, which we just dragged in. So I'll just drag in the texture here. So the thing to note about this texture is that it is a sprite sheet and it has three horizontal frames. So in order to only display one of these frames, which is what we want to do when the game is playing, we adjust the horizontal frames field in the animation uh, group of fields. And then let's see what happens if we run the current scene. So that makes sense. The penguin just drops because gravity is affecting it since um, it's a rigid body 2D. To get a better sense, let's just move it a little to the right. And yeah, okay. So gravity is affecting the penguin as expected. Now let's add our animation, which we will control via code shortly. We'll call it flap because it's used to flap the penguin's tail and it's going to animate the frame property of the penguin sprite. So at zero seconds, we want the frame to be the first frame. And then at 0.4 seconds, we want to display the zeroth frame. And we can check this out by just clicking on these frames here. Time is zero, value is one. Time is 0.4, value is zero. So it checks out. And then if we play the animation, we see that the first frame of the animation has the tail up and then the tail goes down. Um, so it looks good, and that's our animation. Now that we have our animation, I'm going to add some support for user input. To do that, I'll add a script to our penguin node. I'll put it in this scripts folder. And so the main thing we need to do is detect user input. But first, I'll add this constant, which will just be the kind of force we apply upward. And now we'll write the function, which is built in, that allows us to detect user input. Um, so whenever a, an input event comes in and that input event is a keyboard event, and that keyboard event is spacebar, which is what this UI select action is, um, you can find all these actions in the um, input map section of the settings. So you can see here that by default, UI select is going to be spacebar. So whenever spacebar is pressed, we're going to have our penguin jump or flap. Uh, we can change the kind of controls later, like change it to not be spacebar, but for now that's convenient, so let's go with it. And then inside of penguin jump, we're gonna do a few simple things. First, we'll set linear velocity to zero to kind of zero out the current velocity, which is good for playability. Then we'll make the penguin go up by applying this upward force. And then finally, we will play our animation after stopping it. And so notice here that we're not actually like moving our penguin explicitly. We're not saying like, go to this location. We're applying forces. That's what rigid body 2Ds are good for. Kinematic body 2Ds are basically like, go here, go here. Um, it's really hard to tell rigid body 2D to actually go to a specific location. Um, the kind of physics are a little bit slow, so I'm going to change the gravity scale, change the weight, 
and then it's a little more responsive now, which I like. Cool, so that's our user input. Now it's time to add a collision shape to our penguin so that it can collide with stuff. And the rigid body 2D has actually been warning us about this with that little yellow sign. So there are a few ways to do this. One is we can just add a child node, and this means we would have to shape these shapes manually. The easier way is to use a feature of Godot sprites where it automatically generates a collision polygon 2D for us based on the sprite, the sprite's texture that is. Note that this doesn't seem to work when H frames is greater than one, which is why I temporarily turned it back to one. And then I'm just going to delete um, two of these shapes because um, I'm lazy and I'm not gonna change the collision shape when I play my very small animation. Note that, you know, we can always come back and tweak this later, but it's a pretty good approximation of what we want the collision shape to be. And so after I add this collision shape, um, there's nothing for it to collide with right now. So I'm going to add some walls in the main scene so that the penguin kind of can't go off the top or off the bottom. And I could do this manually, but I think it's a little cleaner to do it um, programmatically. So I'll go ahead and create a script for the main scene. And then inside of this script, we'll add some code to programmatically add those walls in the ready function of main. So we'll add this um, add wall function that takes in two things, a position and a size, um, both kind of traits of the wall we'll be adding. And then it's just some pretty simple code to create these walls programmatically. First, we need to create the shape that these walls will have, and we'll set the shape size to be the past in size. And then we need to create a collision shape. Um, and we just give that collision shape, or we set that collision shapes shape to the rectangle shape that we just created, a lot of shapes. And then we create a collision object, and we will uh, kind of set the collision object's position to the past in position. Finally, after all that's done, basically this like programmatically creating these nodes, we can add the collision object to our scene. And once that's done, we can just use this function to add a wall at the top of our main scene um, and at the bottom. So we can just pass in the position and the size of our wall. We want the wall to take up the entire width of the screen. And the height is basically just so that it covers um, an adequate portion of the grass. The height doesn't really matter for the top wall. It matters more for the bottom wall. And after that, we can turn on visible collision shapes just so we can see what's happening a little more. Um, and we just need to drag in our penguin to the main scene so it can collide with those walls we just generated. And if we move it around a little bit, Cool, so we can see that the penguin has a collision shape, there's a collision shape at the bottom, there's an invisible one at the top because it's off screen, and the penguin can collide with everything. Um, so yeah, our collisions look like they're working. So one quick thing to note is that if you move the collision shape off center, um, I'm also moving the sprite off center here, but that's just so kind of things don't look all weird. Um, yeah, if you move the collision shape off center, you get this weird physics effect where um, once hitting a flat surface, the shape will just kind of bend up or like torque up. This doesn't happen if everything is lined up perfectly on center. I don't fully know why this is. I'm assuming it's just because you get some weird, weird physics effects when the collision shape isn't at the center of gravity or like aligned to the center of gravity. But just keep this in mind and make sure that your collision shapes are, you know, basically centered with your rigid body 2Ds. Now that our collisions are done, we're just gonna do a little bit of refactoring to clean up the way they work. Um, so if you go on over to the rigid body 2D, you can see there are two properties, collision layer, which is the physics layer this area is in. Um, and then there's also collision mask, which is the physics layer this area scans for collisions. 
And so taken together, these two properties will basically define what other um, bodies that this penguin can collide with. So for example, if you set the layer to three and the mask to four, that means that things that have a mask set to three will collide with the penguin because it's in layer three. And then this penguin will scan for bodies that are in layer four because it has a mask of four and then it will collide with those. So basically it's just kind of determining what this object will collide with and what object will collide with this. And so it's possible to control all this in the UI and you can even go into the settings and edit the names of the physics layers, which can be pretty useful if you do want to control it through the UI. Um, I think I need to kind of switch out of here to get it to show up. So yeah, now you can see that the, the layers are named but I actually kind of prefer it to do it in code. I think it just gets a little repetitive and hard to refactor if you do it in the UI. And it's hard to kind of like programmatically tell what objects are in what layer. And so we're gonna create a script to control all this called collision layers. And this script will just contain um, this one enum called layers and this is basically just the equivalent. We're just writing out the names in code. So right now we have two layers, wall and penguin. And then we can set all the values programmatically in the penguin script. So first we will just zero out the collision layer field because it's a bit mask. And then we can set the relevant bit using that enum we just declared. So we want the um, Oh, okay, yeah, we want the, the penguin layer bit to be set, and then we want to scan for the wall. So basically we want to tell other things, hey, we are a penguin, and we're looking to collide with things that say they are walls. And then in order for this to work properly, we need to kind of do the same thing for the walls we programmatically generated. Again, this is kind of an advantage of programmatically generating the walls. Um, so yeah, then we just say that the walls we generate are in the walls layer and they are just gonna scan for everything because a lot of things are gonna wanna collide with the walls. So we'll just have everything, them scan for everything. Um, and we can see there's an error here. I made a typo, but also Godot is not going to be able to find collision layers. It's not declared in the current scope. And that's because there are no global variables in Godot. And so what we need to do is auto load this script, which basically just makes it a singleton so that we can reference it anywhere in our code. Um, you can also do this for scenes. How it works for scenes is a little more complicated. But anyhow, when we do this, the error should go away. And then we should be able to run our code and yeah everything still works properly, which is as expected. So there's no functional change here. It's just kind of a, um, a way to, to control our, our physics layers a little more finely. And this will come in useful as we start adding in more and more physics bodies. Cool, so that's it for this video. Feel free to drop a comment with any questions or feedback you have. And in the next video, I'll probably be adding the characters the penguin can poop on and maybe the pooping mechanic if we have time. Um, just a reminder, the source code for this video is in the description, as well as the accompanying blog post. Um, see you next time.